Good evening, everyone. My name's Danny. I'm a software engineer here at Sky Betting and Gaming. And tonight, I'm going to be talking about Apache Kafka. So, for those of you who don't know what Apache Kafka is, it's a distributed streaming platform, and it's based on an abstraction of a distributed commit log. So where it really excels is in the building of real-time streaming data pipelines and streaming applications. So before diving into the technicalities of Kafka, I just want to kind of talk about where you would use Kafka, just so people have a kind of idea of where it, where it sits. So the main use case, so the main reason Kafka was developed by LinkedIn was to track users on the, on the LinkedIn website. So where they was going, what they was doing, searching, logging out, logging in, that kind of stuff. And the idea of whatever these people was doing was all sent to Kafka and it was split up per activity. So basically this allowed people who were monitoring people, um, it allowed them to kind of subscribe to what they was doing. Um, they could process what these people were doing. So they could do like real-time monitoring, we could load it into Hadoop, offline data warehousing, that kind of stuff. Um, but then people realized there was more use cases for it, such as like stream processing or ETL. So the idea that the data is consumed from Kafka topics and aggregated, enriched, filtered, transformed into new topics. And then, yeah, so it can be further consumed or followed up with more processing. So I kind of think of like, um, like credit card transactions, bank transactions. So the idea that they could be checked for fraud, um, that kind of thing. And part of the Kafka API um, comes with Kafka streams. And that's available straight out of the box for you to form um, data processing. Um, so it's like, uh, if anybody's used like Flink, Spark, that kind of thing. And yeah, it can also be for uh, messaging. So it can replace that, that traditional message broker that you're using. Um, it's got really good throughput, built-in partitioning, replication, fault tolerance. Um, yeah, so it makes a real good solution for large-scale message processing. So we kind of know what we can use Kafka for. So where does it fit in? And I think this picture paints a real, really good um, image of where it comes in. And that's smack bang in the middle. Um, so you can have web applications feeding data into it, custom applications, services, monitoring, that kind of stuff. And then once that data's in there, you can take, take it out, so take it into databases. Again, like Hadoop, Oracle, that kind of thing, Salesforce. So yeah, it's the idea of you can literally dump the data in there, and then you can get it out into other things. And I think this kind of thing sits in with like legacy stuff. Um, so stuff that's been sitting around in old databases that you can't really do anything with, pop it into Kafka, and then it can be taken out by, by newer things. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about some concepts. So a single Kafka instance referred to a broker, multiple brokers are referred to as a cluster. Um, I was walking through this slide with my wife and my daughter last night, and I was kind of like going across of, like, I like to try and like bring things right down. And she was like, oh, a broker's like a letterbox. I was like, Hey, what do you mean? And she was like, oh, well, like you'd post a letter through a letterbox. And I was like, all right, okay, that's how we go in there. So um, I think kind of like you see like the brokers for letterbox and the cluster is kind of like the small town or the village with the multiple letterboxes around there. And so the main purpose of a cluster is to store streams of records. So the records are like the letter going into the letterbox. Um, and these records are categorized and stored in topics. And I'm guessing everyone's kind of seen like the postman up and the the letterbox and was like that steel grid inside that stops people stealing mail. That's kind of like the topic inside if you want. So I'll kind of see what's going on there. Um, so yeah, so the record that's actually sat in the topic consists of a key value pair and a timestamp. So as I mentioned, topic, it's a stream records that have been published and categorized. And a topic can have one or more consumers that are subscribed to it. So think of a consumer as like an application for the time being. So an application that's consuming them records out of the topic. So a topic is split down into partitions, which are ordered in multiple sequences of records. Um, so kind of think you've got a topic, and then inside that topic you've got a further kind of like segregation, if you want. So each record that sits in a partition has a unique sequential ID, which is referred to as the offset, and that's used to identify the record in the partition. And lastly, topics configured with a retention period policy, which specifies a time to live for records before they're deleted. Um, so there was an article I read a few weeks ago about there was a newspaper company in the US, and they stored all articles from like 1850 
in a Kafka topic. So kind of think about it, that's quite a long time. Whereas you'll have other kind of topics that store logs that might only stick around for 24 hours or so. So, yeah. so we've got producers. So producers are responsible for publishing the records to topics. Um, so basically when we send messages to Kafka, we can specify the actual partition. Um, if we don't, it's sent across as round robin. So say if we had 100 or so records to fire at a Kafka topic and we didn't specify, we'd literally just go like that and literally just fire them in everywhere. But if there was a, a specific partition that we had to send it to, we could actually specify that in there and send it directly to that one. So consumers, so consumers read records from one of our topics and we can have consumer groups. So consumer groups are made up of con multiple consumers that work together to consume from one or more topics. So you might have a topic that literally gets, I don't know, thousands, tens of thousands of messages a second. So in that kind of case, it'd be good to run a, run a consumer group. So each consumer in a, consume, in, a, in a group consumes from one or more partitions. So kind of think you've got a consumer group, and in that consumer group you've got three consumers, and you're consuming from a topic that's got three partitions, you can kind of match them one for one. But consumers in a group cannot consume from the same partition. So say if you've got a consumer group of two consumers and you're consuming from a topic that's got three partitions, it can only do one-to-one, one-to-one, -one, one -one, and then that last consumer would be able to do anything. Yeah, it can't read from the same partition. So I'm just going to talk about Kafka at Skybetting and Gaming. So Kafka at Skybetting and Gaming is used to provide a common data platform where data sources can be accessed to make the better data use cases. And it might sound a bit bit thingy, but this resonates with me quite a bit because I've worked at companies where there hasn't been a problem with using the data that we've got, but people are kind of like, and they don't want to share it, or it would be kind of like, oh, well, we're doing this and we can't really expose this, or we can't do that, you have to, do, you have to get to it in your own means. Whereas, like I said, as the, as the picture I showed earlier, it kind of sits in the middle, so it's, it's pretty easy to get to. So some cool facts. So over a billion messages a day flowing through our clusters. We've got nearly a thousand topics in production. Ten clusters in production made up of 48 brokers, and at peak times, over 60,000 messages a second are coming through there. So there's some, there's some numbers there. So a few use cases on there. So serving real-time notifications to customers. So service and application logging, and customer actions from Skybetting and gaming products. Thank you very much.